So in this video, I'm going to answer a question that's been haunting me since I purchased my lease, and that is, will I supercharge it? Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you like the channel, please subscribe so that you'll be kept up to date on all of our new videos. This question comes from Harold111. I presume your car is a 111R, and if so, are you considering adding a supercharger? So here in the States, the federal lease is also known as the 111R, essentially designating the fact that it's an S2 with the Toyota 2ZZ engine, uh, the 1.8 liter with variable timing. When the car was first released here, naturally aspirated versions were the only options that you had. But as the years went on, a supercharged version of the Elise and a supercharged version of the Exige were made available. Now there are a number of different supercharger options uh, for the Elise with this engine. If I were to go supercharged and forced induction, I would go with the Lotus OEM supercharger kit. I believe that's the one that has the, the Eaton supercharger. That one comes with everything that you need to supercharge the car to the same spec as the 2008 Lotus Elise SCs, just as they were sold here. In fact, if, if the car were still under warranty, it would still have a warranty uh, if the kit were installed by an authorized dealer. For a car like this, I, I like the idea of the, the OEM kit. Lotus are finicky vehicles to begin with, and so when you get into doing aftermarket modifications, even though the community is great, um, it can still be hard to find much in the way of support if things go wrong. And if I were supercharged in the Elise, I would want to keep it still within sort of the character that it has already. The OEM kit brings the power up to around 220, 230 horsepower over the 190 that it has to begin with from the factory which doesn't sound like a lot, but again, when you think about the car weighing about 1,900 pounds, you know, 30 horsepower or so is actually quite a lot. What I need to do, or what I don't need to do, um, at least according to the Lotus people that I've talked to, is actually drive a Lotus Elise SC. I'm a little bit concerned that if I ever drive one with the supercharger that I'm going to really, really, really want the supercharger. The trouble with the supercharger, from my point of view, is that it's a pretty expensive proposition to have the factory one installed. I've talked to my dealer about it just to sort of get an idea of what it would cost. It will be something on the order of around nine to $10,000 to have the factory kit installed. So that price is sort of an interesting area because I paid $34,000 for this at least two years ago. So $10,000 is about not quite a third. I mean, it's a little less than a third of the value of the entire car, but it is pretty close. Is picking up an extra 30 horsepower, even though it's great, is that really worth quite that financial investment? I think for me, it comes down to whether or not I would want to spend $10,000 on top of the car as it stands when I already really love it and don't really want to change the character of the car because I like the fact that the engine is naturally aspirated and I like the fact that I have to ring it out to get power. The prospect of having more torque down low is nice and the prospect of having a second cam changeover at a slightly lower RPM is also kind of nice, but I think I would miss the overall feeling of, okay, yeah, this isn't the most powerful engine ever, but when you really string it out towards the red line, all of this power comes on, it feels very alive and dynamic, and it feels so much like a race car that I think I would miss anything that sort of dilutes that, even if I got more power in exchange. That said, I haven't driven it, and so, and one thing I've learned by owning this car is that if you haven't driven the car, you really just don't know. And so I hope in the coming year that I'll have an opportunity to drive a Lotus Elise SC. If that were to happen, I think the question just becomes whether or not I would spend the $10,000 to upgrade this car to SC spec, or if I would sell it and buy, and buy a factory SC. Right now, the factory SCs from 2008 are starting to come down in price a little bit into the high 30s and so let's say I could sell my car for about what I paid for it which I think I could which would be maybe 34,000 or yeah maybe a little less um, if I could sell this car for 34,000 and then just jump up and buy a factory supercharged car for 40,000 or so I think I would probably do that and I would probably get the car in some crazy color this car is storm titanium metallic if I were able to find an 08 you know, an isotope green or laser blue or one of the orange colors, and it were supercharged, I think that's something that I would consider. But that said, I really love this car, even though I've only owned it for about two years. This car is really special to me and means a lot, and so it'd be really hard for me to get rid of it. So I would really just have to weigh those options. So we'll see next year if I have a chance to drive an SC. At that point, I'll have to make a decision as to whether uh, I like it enough to spend the money to upgrade it, 
and if I did, would I just go ahead and buy a newer car and get and sell this one in order to upgrade? I'm hoping that I will like it, but not like it so much that I want to get rid of this car. I think this is a car that I, I really do hope to hang on to for a very, very long time. And I know that there will be more cars in the future in addition to this one. But there's something I really like about this being sort of a last of a, of a kind and a modern car that is so stripped down and so much like a race car with a really high revving engine. I say this now, and then as soon as you taste more power, then you want more power. Um, so I really just have to say, I will let you know early next year and I will find some way to drive an 08 SC. Maybe I'll just find a dealer that has one somewhere else and we'll do a trip uh, in this one and see if I can do a test drive or maybe I can review it for someone. Or if one of you has one and you'd like to have your car in video and would be willing to maybe let me drive it, um, I would come in and film a video with you. So let's just see how, let's see how it goes. And uh, I'm not in any rush. I still want to spend a little more time with this car as it is. Um, but you know, supercharging is something that I have been, it's, it's certainly on my mind. We'll just have to see where it goes over the next year. I also want to keep the channel in mind because I know that, that doing something like adding a supercharger is, some, is an interesting project. And so it, it's not out of the question that I would consider supercharging it so that I could share that experience with all of you. And you could see, you know, well, how did it go? What was it like? How much did it cost? Uh, what were the performance differences really? And would I do it again? And if the channel gets to a place where it's able to support some of that cost, uh, then it, that changes that proposition too. So it's a very long way of saying maybe. And uh, anyway, I really appreciate the question, and I, and I was this, and this was something I had been wanting to talk about. Uh, thank you so much for asking the question. And anyhow, if you have a supercharged Lotus Elise, or if you've driven them back to back, a naturally aspirated version and the SC version, or I think it's, it may be the 111S in other parts of the world. I'm not sure, I'm doing my best to learn all of the, the model designations, but Lotus has a ton of them that are different around the world. And so I'm, I'm doing my best in learning all of them, but I don't have it down perfectly yet. So I, I ask you to bear with me as I try to figure that out. I know about half of my audience is international and half is from the US. And so this channel was designed to really help bring information to the American audience, but I also recognize that just because there are so few people doing uh, with these cars here and talking about them here, but I also recognize that a great deal of the audience is worldwide. So I want to make all the videos interesting for people who, who aren't from the United States as well. So if you've driven both the supercharged and the naturally aspirated versions of the Elise and can talk about it, please leave a note down in the comments below this.